Hello and welcome to this course on MATLAB programming for numerical computations. This is week one. We have been introducing you to MATLAB. In the previous lecture, I have introduced you to two new type of uh, arrays in MATLAB called cell, cell arrays and MATLAB structures. Okay. Uh, the cell arrays, structures and tables have been recently updated in 2019. They are beginning to be used a lot in MATLAB. Uh, they are a part of good programming practices in MATLAB. So, I am going to cover this for the sake of completeness. Okay. However, this is not going to be part of assignments. This is not going to be part of your exams. This is somewhat advanced level material. As a result, the beginners amongst you can safely skip this video without affecting anything in rest of this course. I repeat, this is not going to be expected in your assignments or in your exams. All the work about MATLAB cell arrays or structures that will be there in your assignment of, or exams have been covered in other lectures. Okay. Let's revisit this example from array operations. This was the mixed data table that we, we had come across in the previous lecture. Okay. In the previous lecture, we had only looked at the numerical part of this table. Now, let us look at the entire data structure uh, in its entirety. This has text as well as numerical uh, arrays in it. Okay? So, let us look at the third row. This is the data for Chetan. Okay? And we, can, we will now look at how we can represent this as a row of a cell array or an element of a structure array or as a row of a table. Okay? So, let us go on to MATLAB and let us look at this particular row. Okay, we will have this. Okay, and that's all. Now we have a cell array as shown over here. Okay. Now, let us say we wanted all of this data in a cell array. We can always write this as my my cell data equal to, we can start this over here. Okay, save this and run this and we now have my cell data. I will double click and this we see is a cell array. Okay, first row over here is all the names. This is marks in first subject, second subject, third subject and in fourth subject. Okay. So, this is what we have. Okay. Now, let us say we wanted a structure. We can create a blank structure name math prog thermo mech. Sorry, this should be round bracket. Okay, so structure will be name, value, name, value, name, value, name, value, name, value. Okay, so what we are doing is we are creating a blank structure. Okay, this structure has five fields name, math marks, programming marks, thermo marks, mech marks. Okay. So, this is how we, we have created this. Okay. So, now let us look at Chetan. Okay. So, S3 So, 
S3 dot name equal to Chetan. So, let us look at what happens. Now, this is Chetan. Now, we will add Chetan's marks. S3 dot math is 66, math marks become 66, this marks is 53, we can double click over here, we can add this marks 53, this is 69. this is 73 okay so this is what how we can we can add this okay as you can see one of the the ways for populating uh, the structures is different than the way we will populate the cell data okay but it is quite easy to populate the structure as well Okay. We will just have to do this a, uh, a bit more programmatically in the sense of putting this in a loop. Okay. So, for example, we can put this in a loop for i equal to 1 to 6 s i dot name is equal to my cell data. i comma 1 si dot math equal to i comma 2 si dot prog equal to my cell data i comma 3 s i dot thermo equal to my and our entire structure has been populated over here okay so i can copy this Okay, and so this is how we can generate uh, an array of structures and a cell array. Okay, and finally, we can also create tables. And for that, I am not going to show you how to create tables, but I will actually show you how you can get help in order to create, how to learn to create table. So, the command to create table is going to be table and this is how you will be able to create tables. So, you will be able to create tables using command table. Okay. You can create table using the command struct to table. So, we can actually come create table very easily now that we have structure.
Oke. Okay. So again, in all of these lines, because the size of S is increasing, that's why we are getting this warning, but let's ignore those warnings for now. Okay. Now we have this my data table. Let's double click this and see what we get. Okay. So this is what we are going, going to get. Okay. And if you see the real beauty of this particular table, it also gives you statistics. Okay. There are six items in this table. Okay. Minimum is 15, maximum is 85, average is 53.5. Okay, minimum is 40, maximum is 72, average is 52.5. So you remember the operations that we had talked about in the, uh, uh, in the lecture done uh, two videos earlier, all those operations are automatically done for you by MATLAB. Okay, where did MATLAB start introducing the tables? MATLAB started introducing the tables looking at the popularity of, uh, of Excel. Uh, I don't know if that is, that is true, but that's actually my perception of uh, where tables becomes, become useful in MATLAB. Okay? They have certain properties of what you can do in Excel. Of course, they don't have all the capabilities of Excel, but this is MATLAB's attempt to bring in certain features of Excel into MATLAB. So you can import tables like the way you can do them uh, you do, you can do them in excel and you can do some certain simple operations on these tables okay for that i come to the end of this lecture again i repeat as i mentioned earlier all the contents of this particular lecture are beyond the scope of this particular course I have used this lecture only for the sake of completeness. That's primarily because I used to get a lot of questions from students in IIT Madras about uh, some of these structures, cell arrays and tables when I discussed with them uh, in various different fora. Okay? So with that, I come to the end of this lecture and I will see you in the next video. Thanks and bye.